at Mario. Good morning and thank you for attending Infrastructure Committee. Um, apologies today. Well, firstly, actually, I'd like to welcome Wayne O'Donnell and Gay Broker from the Community Boards. Thank you. And apologies from Councillor Barbara Gilchrist or Rowan Hassel from the Peasant Point Community Board. I'm happy to move. I've got a seconder. Thank you, Mayor Bowen. All in favour say aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, identifications of urgent business. I've received none. And then we have got any matters of a minor nature. Okay. Any conflicts of interest? Perfect. Chairman's report. Um, since our last standing committees, um, I've um, uh, attended long-term plan engagement with the Muslim Education Trust, Presbyterian, uh, Presbyterian Support South Canterbury. Um, we had a stall at Caroline Bay Playground, uh, attended the Grey Power meeting in Prime Court. I've attended a citizenship and council meetings and long-term plan hearing, tenders and procurements. Attended lunch uh, with the RL Board of Directors and the Executive Management uh, team stakeholder, which was very good, and got to catch up with past Councillor Leslie, which was lovely. Uh, also attended the Tamuka Community Board on behalf of Councillor Booth and had a meeting with Andrew Dixon, Group Manager. I'm happy to move my report for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Lyon. All in favour, aye. Thank you. All right, we will move on to number 6.6, .6, confirmation of the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Walls, and second by Mayor Bowen. All in favour say aye. Given our reports. So um, we start off with 7.1, what is the implications of water service bill on the water supply operations? Um, this bill is. Oh. Okay. Um, Can I have a second, seconder for the minutes, please? Thank you, Councillor Booth. Um, so this bill is expected to be enacted around October this year, and it looks at three general areas, which is the source of water, the treatment and the reticulation. I'm going to pass over to um, Grant Hall now to speak to the report. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, uh, as you said, uh, the water services bill will be enacted, uh, is expected to be enacted uh, later this year, October uh, 21. Um, and that also sets the establishment um, of the Tamatarawai, the drinking water regulator. They have uh, issued an exposed draft, is what it's called, of drinking water standard operational rules, compliance rules. Um, and we've had um, the ability to have Judy Blakemore uh, part of some committees that uh, are reviewing and providing input into those rules. So. Although um, they're not finalised, we do have, a, I think, a reasonable idea of what they are. So we've gone through um, uh, the implications of, of some of those. Um, and just to summarise, uh, within the drinking, within the source water, there will be source water risk management plans. Um, we're really not too sure of the extent of these, but these will be looking at all of the properties within a source water catchment that could have an influence on the quality of the raw water, which is a bit of an unknown beast. So um, uh, that's coming up. There is a potential uh, um, issue with perhaps the need to carry through into our district plan some constraints in terms of land use associated with that, but that's also um, uh, a little bit unknown. There's quite a bit there in terms of monitoring, um, both in source and also uh, treatment plants and within the reticulation. So there's some continuous monitoring that will be required, which um, is, is pretty certain. Um, in relation to the treatment plants though, continuing our current program, um, we should be fine. Uh, although there is of course um, some, uh, the issue of chlorination at Geraldine. Um, look, uh, and, and uh, finally, Beautiful Valley, uh, which will also have, uh, um, although it's a stock water, um, we understand that there possibly could be uh, people using that for drinking water, in which case we'll need to look seriously at um, providing some point of use uh, treatments there as well, and happy to take any questions. Councillor Booth. 
So when you say beautiful valley, what sort of numbers are you talking about there, right? Uh, numbers in terms of consumers, yeah. um, uh, about 20. 20. Mm -hmm. uh, um, properties. Yeah. And so would they not, so through what you're seeing here, we would need to take a more direct role in yes. that. Yes. Yes. So uh, it is a, a um, uh, council service supply, although it is um, classified as a stock water scheme. Uh, but I, uh, we understand that there are people that do use it for drinking water. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Wills. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Just in regards to Geraldine Ward and the, um, I suppose, the passion that they delivered here last time we went through and had those discussions around chlorination. Will there be some sort of public information, education sharing around this process? So we're keeping well informed and up to date with what's happening and how it's going to be proceeding? Absolutely. Yep, yeah, so absolutely. I can imagine yes. that it will certainly create a bit of a um, interest, interest from particular groups. And I just want to make sure that we're all over it, you know, so oh, yeah. Uh, um, and, uh, for interest, uh, so Pleasant Point and Geraldine uh, um, two years ago were very similar drinking waters, uh, shallow bores, UV, um, and as we know, Pleasant Point has since been chlorinated, um, yet still one of the best tasting water in the country. Uh, so uh, as uh, the Mayor said, chlorination doesn't necessarily um, impact on the, the taste of the water, it can still be safe and tasty. And uh, in the recent rain events, um, Geraldine is still on a boil water notice, right. and they wouldn't have been if they had chlorine. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Mayor Bowen. Uh, thanks, uh, Chair. A uh, question, there was, I think it's rule point uh, 11 or 12, but there was some unbudgeted um, items and should we be budgeting some more uh, money in this long-term plan? It was- Point 11. Yeah, as 11, is it? Yeah, there we go. Yes, we, um, so we have budgeted um, what we um, were sure of. Yeah. Um, and um, so, yes, there are a number of costs in there that, that are now becoming uh, more firmer in terms of our understanding of what's necessary and the costs associated with that, um, and they aren't currently in the budget. Uh, so, and we won't know for sure until later in the year. Yeah. Um, and then we're also not 100% sure in terms of the timing of when various things will need to be uh, uh, in place. It won't be a flick of the switch where everything needs to happen yeah, immediately. So there's some time for so there, is, yeah. so there will be some time for implementation, but and we're not too sure of that. So we currently haven't included it, but we may need to look. Um, we'll, we'll need to once we get an idea of what that program is, we'll need to look at our budgets. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Councillor Lyon. No, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, Grant, I just want to uh, thank you and your team, you know, for the way you've obviously put, you yeah. know, managed the chlorine in the uh, business point supply, because that's the key. So it's really, it's, it's set, um, big, big ups to you and your management of, of that facility, because it's showing the way what can be done. So you take a big pat on the back, uh, you and your team for what you've done, because it's a pretty big achievement. And it does lead, it does show the way that it can be done successfully and well. So thanks for that. Yeah, you'll pass it on to the team. Do I have a mover for the report to be received and noted? Yeah. Councillor Booth and Ms. Bowen. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Passed. Okay. Thank you, Grant. Yes. All right, 7.2. So this next report outlines the changes proposed to setting the speed limits under the new speed management framework. Uh, there's two options for council to consider and decide on one option, and I invite Susie up. To uh, to talk to the report. Good morning, Susie. Good morning, Chair. Um, yes, yeah, so I will take the report as read. Obviously, speed limits in bylaw reviews. The background of that is that you know to undertake a speed limit change throughout the district, we needed to do a, um, a bylaw review. 
um, or triggering a, a special consultative procedure to make any changes. Um, there is a rule, uh, yeah, a legislative change coming, um, December 2021, that takes um, the need for the special consultative procedure out of council's hands and um, goes into a regional uh, regional process. So we'd work alongside our, our Canterbury peers um, to develop a regional speed management plan. So I suppose, yeah, the, the, the two options um, are outlined in the, in the report here. Um, so option one is that um, we can consider, you know, you know uh, the RCA still considers the speed limits um, and the comp compliant proposed changes to the speed limits in consultation with the community, um, but that informs the new regional management speed management plan. And then um, that's consulted on by the regional, um, at the moment it's uh, said that it will be the regional transport committee, so the RTC will, will do this. Um, and then that will be advertised on a, on a regional basis. Um, and then um, any feedback that is given will be then considered by um, the, the RCA that put them forward um, before changes are implemented. And so that's the preferred option. Um, and the other option is that we could um, undertake a, the traffic speed limit by law review, um, but would have to be implemented before December 2021. Um, and it would trigger a special consultative procedure uh, and obviously uh, would potentially place a financial uh, resource and time burden on the community and council on the back of the long-term plan process. And there's obviously a risk that um, we wouldn't actually be able to get the bylaw review process completed in time to implement those, those speed limit changes. So the recommendation is, is not that one. So. Thank you, Susie. Uh, uh, so when will it be realistic that we can actually make some changes just conscious that you know we've had discussions previously perhaps early in the year around you know changes to school uh, speed limits I know at the Jordan Ward meeting recently or a couple ago there was uh, some discussions around you know a variety of um, speed zones in and around Geraldine, yeah, we, and, and we don't want to keep those, putting those back, do we? No, I agree. No, we want to make sure that we can get in there and, and look at those. So there, the proposed rule also introduces an alternative process um, in which you can put forward um, changes that basically, um, you know, we're before the 2024, which will be the next full regional speed plan, but you can actually put forward um, a relevant um, some change. Um, and it's, you know, around that road use change, you know, some road use change, um, and there is a real demand to have, I think it's 60%, 60% of schools um, with reduced speed limits before July 2022. So that's certainly something that we, there, there is a process to allow for that. So I suppose it takes it from being a full bylaw process um, to a bit more of a we can, can react when needed. Um, and make changes in small areas, opposed to having to do the whole big <laughs> district review. Councillor Lyons. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, that sounds great, uh, Susie, because as you know, with Point East and West, there's, you know, always requesting a look at that. So that could be looked at under this new, under these new uh, guidelines. Um, yes, however, being through State Highway 8, um, it still does fall to the transport agency for that, but they, they also have the process to be able to make changes um, a, a bit easier. Um, yeah, so it just, I suppose it takes, you yeah, know, there still will be a consultation on the speed management plan um, and the speed limits that are proposed have still got to fit within the speed limit setting rules. So, you know, that means that it's got to be, you know, the likes of outside of the school or it's got to have the infrastructure that encourages traffic to go slower. So narrower roads, thresholds, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, it, it means that it, speed becomes another another tool um, to, to manage road safety. Council, com, Councillor <coughs> Oliver. Thanks, Susie. Um, are we looking at making this an easier process? Because obviously, um, just recently, we took a couple of recommendations um, regarding some speed changes in our small towns. And obviously, when our community gets told it's going to take a year to do and all that, and it's, it's safety, it's all about safety. Is this Will this review make it simpler to make some changes around those speed limits? Or are we still going to be yearly, a year away from getting things done when we really want it done? Yeah, the intention is that this new rule will make it simpler. Um, and that I think that the government realises that the vital process is, is quite a, a difficult process to work through and making those changes. So. The idea is the speed limits are just simply consulted on and, and, and then gazetted, makes it a lot simpler. Yeah. Okay. But remember, speed limits is only one tool in the toolbox when it comes to road safety. Yeah. 
Yep. There are other things we can do to actually manage speed. Yep. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Sue. Councillor O'Reilly. Yep. Thank you. Um, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, it's this has been a process, and I, you know, I'd, I'd like to move that we go with option one because it's it's been. Um, I, I know just you know ourselves and, and our, our small community have been asking for a number of years, and Andrew and I have had lots of conversations about uh, shifting speed limits, and, and it's to go back to government and all sorts of regulatory hold-ups and different things, but so I, I'm more than happy to move it so we can make the process a hell of a lot faster if possible. Thank you, Councillor O'Reilly. Councillor Booth. Um, so, like, when I drove past schools, pretty much all of them have got flashing lights and 30, and if it's through school time, it's like 30 k's. It's like, uh, uh, how many, uh, are they not, obviously, if I'm not saying, uh, uh, are they all not like that, or... No, correct. They're not all like that at this point in time. So the changes that are proposed under the speed limit setting rule are that any that already have existing infrastructure in for the 40, which is what was accepted previously, um, may stay in place. However, all of the uh, any new speed limit reductions um, will be down to 30 in the urban area and at least 60, so 60 k's or less in the rural area. But again, it comes with that um, disclaimer that we need to have infrastructure in place that that encourages the slower speed as well. So yeah, you know, to go from 100 in our rural area down to 30 without you know just putting signs up obviously would not work. We'd need to have infrastructure there. So that's why they've got the differential between the rural and the urban schools. But you know there's there's still a ways to go. A lot of our rural schools you know, they might have um, school zone signs, but yet not actual speed limits, not enforceable speed limits. Thank you, Susie. So we have a mover for the recommendation for option one. Is there any more discussion or do I have a seconder? Councillor will second. All in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you, Susie. Okay, moving on to 7.3. Um, so this report is to update the Committee on Key Capital Expenditure Projects and I'm going to pass over to Josie and Ashley. Welcome. At, at the moment, Madam Chair, we are in a uh, transition phase between previous people doing program delivery and uh, and Lily uh, on maternity leave, and Josie is um, filling part of the role and has very helpfully prepared the the six reports for Council on uh, key projects. The, the first one um, is is the the overview, and that's provided here and also to the Commercial and Strategy Group. I think. Uh, committee meeting because it's an overview of all the projects and I suggest that um, it would be appropriate to deal with the individual projects and then we'll deal with the overview in comp strategy. So we'll go through project by project, take questions. And so we've got uh, hopefully in the room behind us uh, some of the staff who uh, have helped prepare their projects because these belong to, to staff, although one of them is mine. Um, and they've done a lot of the inputs. Uh, it's Josie has, has um, you know, uh, coordinated that input and uh, got it ready for presentation. So if it's a question on an individual, we could have some other stuff. Absolutely, that... no. Um, Councillor Plinton. Uh, no, mine was overall. Just okay. Evening, so. um, I have a question. Um, the consenting, so we've still got some applications ongoing for the parallel pipeline. Um, just a matter of process? Uh, mainly, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, and I notice on um, a few of these reports, there is uh, the risk regarding getting uh, material cause of co international material because of COVID nineteen. How real is that risk? Uh, because and it's mainly to do with uh, pipelines, and the risk is real. But uh, um, fortunately, the the way we've set up the projects and in, in that they are significant pipelines, therefore they have a long duration, and that means if contractor uh, services are appointed. They then order their materials. Pipe is made in New Zealand, uh, but valves for most of the pipe are made overseas. As long as I've um, you know, ordered um, promptly, then they'll be able to um, acquire those at the end of the contract period and do the installation. Uh, but but the bigger issue uh, right now uh, is shipping. So the, the, they can be ordered and so on. Then they can sit on walls waiting for shipping. And that's uh, you know, both into New Zealand and out of New Zealand is a real issue at the moment. 
but at this stage we're okay and uh, it will materialise next year um, but we just have to wait and see how it goes it's not something we can actually control it's you know right beyond us you just take what you're given thank you councillor wills just in regards to the delays there <clears throat> Mr. Harper, just around the costings, et cetera, are we, see, are we going to see an increase in costings associated to it? And where will that fall? Um, generally, no. In product and delivery? Yeah, no, uh, generally cost, um, costs are okay because uh, contractors order when they're awarded the contract, then they're paying that price. And so, the, for example, the pipeline material uh, is made in New Zealand, uh, imported uh, feedstock, but as long as they buy... Uh, purchase order the pipes uh, as as soon as they've been awarded the contract, then they lock in uh, the cost for that, and therefore the contract uh, the supplier can lock in their uh, supply chains, and so it's not shown to be an issue at this time. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on from Parallel Pipeline to Downlands Water Supply. I see construction is behind progress. Do you would like to speak to that? Uh, I'm not sure if Grant or Selwyn are in the room. The big picture is that what um, it, it's behind what was set uh, last year, 15 months ago, but in terms of delivery of the projects, once I've been let, it's actually running really well. Yep. Um, so, uh, section one of the pipeline um, uh, is uh, well behind. Uh, that's the lining material. Um, and uh, although I have some good news, which is to say that the first section of pipeline, the liner was installed um, and on, was, Friday. Uh, on, on Friday, and the pipeline was that section of pipeline made live on Saturday. Um, so uh, there are another four of those linings to do within that section, uh, but getting up to this point um, has been protracted, but it should progress, um, uh, yeah, hopefully straight forward uh, from now. So, um, uh, so that's that, that section. Um, and uh, yeah, in terms of uh, section two, there's a little bit in, in terms of some consenting, which is in process, uh, but that as a 12 month uh, pro, uh, contract is about to start. Yes. Thank you, Grant. And, Thank you. and Madam Chair, in the uh, report, there's a, a, a great drone photo of the reservoirs uh, being constructed mm -hmm. and it just shows you the, the scope and scale of the project. When you see some of those um, diggers and trucks there, they're pretty small, it shows you how big the project is. And they're making great progress on, on lining the reservoirs and uh, filling them will take a while because we've still got to keep the scheme operational. So you've only got a bit of surplus water that can go into the reservoirs to actually. Mm -hmm. So we're filling both of those ponds now. The lining is complete and we're now filling the ponds. And the water treatment plant is at the bottom of the photo and the shed for that is up and it's, yeah, it's all progressing really well. Great. Thank you. Um, Mayor Bowen. Thanks, more a comment than anything, but that photo, that's a, a great photo, but it's also a great example of what may or may not be a priority for a new water entity if they were to take our water assets. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the Winchester Geraldine roundabout, which drives wonderfully. I've gone through it a couple of times. Any comments from councillors? Councillor Oliver? Well, just on the um, recent flooding, and don't get me wrong, I know it was probably a one in 50 year flood, but it, the, 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 just a hundred year, just to highlight that we got a bit cut off there at the roundabout because it filled up with water. Has any work been considered to make that because it does cut us off if that would happen again? Although we were cut off at the Winchester Bridge as well. So I totally understand that. I'm just wondering if they were considering the extra work just to make that more viable if there was a, a um, flood. Yeah, I believe, and I'll just refer to. Front. I believe it was a one in 200 year event through okay. there. Yeah. Um, uh, we had, did actually upgrade the drainage uh, through there, so it was at double the capacity that we normally do. So those one in 50s that we had a few years ago would not have, um, we wouldn't have had the same problem. So it was just the size of the event. Um, so, it's, but, so, so no, there's nothing further being done at this point. There is obviously alternative access through um, Arari Station Road and Earl Road. 
Um, so yeah, and yeah. hopefully Hawaii's uh, yeah, <laughs> accessible yeah, yeah. well again shortly. Yeah. Um, as far as the project goes, um, it was tracking really well, and it, well, it still is tracking okay. But obviously, the flood event um, has diverted crews that were working on the auxiliary roads um, to uh, it reinstate access for those that have been cut off throughout the uh, flood. So there is potential that we may go slightly over time into next financial year. We're having conversations with the transport agency in regards to what what this flood event and its response um, means for our capital program and the ability to carry forward their funding. So, yeah, working working on that. Yeah, I, I think that Susie's raised an important point too, is we have actually had a little bit of a, a speed bump um, with the event and it will slow down some of the delivery of our capital works projects. But hopefully it won't be too long. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the road rehab program. Any questions from councillors? Okay, the three water stimulus program. Ah, uh, yes, that's my uh, project at the moment, Madam Chair. Uh, I think we're in a, a really good position with all projects. Uh, we're not uh, looking at any any time uh, issues because um, they must all be finished by 31 March next year, and we're really on track for most of them being finished this year. Uh, the stimulus package managers out of Wellington have been in touch and said, has the, the major uh, flood event impacted your work program? And our answer to that is no, because we were you know, well ahead of um, what, what might have otherwise been the case. And therefore, a month delay now, as there is in, in a couple of these builds, uh, will not be material. And so we're looking really good for that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so... So the recommendations for the report to be received and noted. I'm happy to move that. Seconder. All in favour? Aye. Against the character. Thank you. Right. 7.4. So 7.4. So this report is for the committee to consider council to take responsibility for the ongoing maintenance of the Wash Dyke to Pleasant Point Trail along State Highway 8. And I'm going to ask um, Andrew to speak to this report. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Bill Steens, who is the author of this report, is on annual leave today, so uh, I'll fill in for his him in this case. The, this new cycle trail was, I guess, initiated by a, a group of the Central South Island Cycle Trails in Inc., who had managed to secure quite a substantial amount of funding, both from council and from uh, government, and um, construction of this is underway. So the construction contract is actually being handled by council. That's where we are running it. And I guess the, the group feel that they have um, succeeded in, in getting this thing built and now want to pass it over to council. So they, of course, they're not set up to actually do the maintenance and the long-term renewal of the cycleway once it's been constructed. So that is the, um, I guess, the request that has come through that is council uh, basically it takes over the ownership and the responsibility for the future maintenance of the cycle trail once it's been constructed. It is not taking over the land, it is just taking over the asset because the land itself is under different agreements from owners. Thank you, Andrew. Councillor Lyon. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, well, you know, the proposal seems, you know, eminently fair to me, but, um, you know, some of that country, there's a wee bit of... Um, uh, noxious weeds, you know, along the, uh, the old railway line. So the, 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 there's a wee few things to do, but no, it won't, won't be too onerous, I don't believe, because it's a pretty safe through fare there. So it shouldn't be too onerous, I, I would expect. But naturally, um, I think it's quite proper that the maintenance comes back to council. You know, council was very supportive through its stimulus and, uh, and then it's NCTA again. So it's got the eyes of the two authorities um, firm, firmly uh, focused on it and in agreement. So I, I would uh, move that the recommendation uh, uh, be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Lyon. Any, uh, Councillor Birch, are you on like a second? Any further comments? Okay, so we're gonna move on and second to all in favor for the recommendation. Aye, uh, against, carry it. Okay, so there's no urgent business, no, Minor matters. So we're going to go into public exclusion now. I'm happy to move that. I've got Senator Mayor Bowen. Thank you. All in favour? Aye. Right. 